We're rolling again here. Uh, you know what? Let me bring in the somewhat torn Fun Run t-shirt to clean up the board with. And welcome to the, uh, the family. Now, I, I don't know that the t-shirt of disgust had any last words, but I know the t-shirt of disgust was quite happy working here. We're taking up a fund for its family. If you want to send me some money, Mike Morley, P.O. Box, never mind. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So what were we talking about? Uh, we said for Z equals A plus IB, the norm of Z is Z times Z bar square root. And Z bar, of course, is the complex conjugate is A minus IB. And I'm going to put a little picture up here so we can still see what's going on. And it doesn't really matter. I just want a point up here. We're going to say that this point is A plus IB. Good enough. That means that this R, which will be the norm of Z, will be the square root of A squared plus B squared. And here's the triangle that you guys get to deal with, the wonderful triangle that you get to deal with. Ooh, look at there. That's nice and square. So this is B. This is A. There is some angle here, some angle theta. And we need to know what this angle is, right? So how do we figure that out in general? Well, whatever this is, we know that the tangent of theta is B divided by A, assuming A is not equal to zero. Suppose A is equal to zero. What does that mean? Well, if A is equal to zero, that means that it's either straight up like this, that is B is greater than zero, which means this theta is 90 degrees, or it's down here. We have different colors, so we might as well use them. So this would be B. So B is less than zero. That means that theta is three pi over two. And yeah, we got to be a little careful when we're figuring this stuff out. But we now remember, hopefully if I told you this before, uh, we can write complex numbers like this. Let me get this thing out of the way here. Ooh, these are so cheap. Hopefully you remember from the earlier videos I showed you that you could take and write Z as R e to the i theta, where R is, of course, the uh, norm of Z, and theta is the angle right here. And this is also the same as R, uh, oopsie, this R cosine theta plus I sine theta. The fact that this is the same as this comes from, um, you won't really see it until Cal 2 in Taylor series. You can show that uh, uh, cosine of x and sine of x can be represented by these certain infinite series, which I showed a, a bit back, and you can finagle it out to make these the same things. Okay, and, this, and these are what's really important. Also, right away from de Mauvres, Remember, what, what did we say? We said that cosine x plus i sine x to the n is equal to cosine nx plus i sine oopsie, oopsie, nx. Why would this be true? Well, we can see it right here. First, we're just going to let r be 1, right? So we know what is e to the i theta to the n? Well, this is in fact e to the i theta is, or e to the i theta to the n is this. Because e to the i theta, without any r, or r equals 1 in this case, is cosine x plus i sine x. So e to the i theta to the nth power is cosine x plus i sine x to the nth power. And let's look at this. This is, remember, a m to the n is a to the m times n. So this is e to the i n theta. This, by the construction of this that I showed a couple videos back, then will be cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. OK, and this, I mean, this has some really wondrous uses. And really what it does is it ties in complex analysis to trigonometry in a really uh, straightforward way. 
Let me see what I was going to yak about now. Oh, we got five minutes left in this one. Oh, okay, so let's make sure these things are equivalent, right? And I'm going to spend way more time on these than any of the other stuff because this is the real stuff that's important. Uh, if you're at this point where you feel comfortable manipulating the stuff to get your homework done, you know, I'm okay with that. If you're going to be a scientist or an engineer, if you love physics, chemistry, uh, deep mathematics, spend a lot of time here with me. So first off, we said that we can write z as equal to r e to the i theta. We said also that the norm of z is equal to z times z bar square root. We said this is a squared plus b squared. Let's make sure that this still happens, right? Oops. a squared plus b squared square root. So the norm of z, if z is uh, r e to the i theta, what is, well, I'm even going to go back a little more with this. Remember, so here is our, our point here. This is a plus ib. This is theta. We know that uh, theta is the arctangent of b divided by a. And I'm just assuming a is not equal to zero. If a is equal to zero, we can figure out what it is. What is, uh, Okay, so this is z. Here is a picture of z bar right here, complex conjugate. conjugate. This is a minus i b. That means that this angle, uh, I guess I'll call this theta bar, this angle, you should be able to see from the geometry, from the symmetry, that this is just going to be minus theta. But let's see that that's actually the case, right? Uh, so uh, theta bar is going to be the arc tangent of minus b over a, or this should be this. Remember that tangent is an odd function. So, oh geez, I really want to do this even though it's going to take so much time. What the heck, you know what, I'm going to really, really spend a huge amount of time talking about this. It, I hope you don't get bored. but it, for one person, it might only be one person, but for that person, this should be here for you. I'm going to show you what real math is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this, from the picture, it should be obvious that this is just minus theta, right? But you can't really say things are justified by just doing pictures. So let's see why this would be true. Uh, let's assume a is not equal to zero, so I'm not dividing out by a. And these two specific cases you can just do by hand. That will be easy. Uh, we know if z is equal to a plus ib, then z bar, which is the complex conjugate, is a minus ib. Uh, by the definitions we've established, we know that uh, theta, which is associated with this, actually, let me be more clear about why, where and why theta is, z is also equal to r e to the i theta, right? Where r is the norm of z, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Um, so we know that this theta that's associated with this particular z uh, is the primary theta. I'm going to show you later that there's actually an infinite number of that would be serve as well, but this is the one I'm interested in right now, the, within 0 to 2 pi, that this is equal to the arc tangent, the inverse tangent of b divided by a. Okay, and this is just clear by definition of what you've been learning this entire semester. That's a. This is a squared plus b squared square root. So my claim then is that if we do this, so this the complex conjugate, this is still going to have the same r, right? Because if you take this, the complex conjugate of, or the norm of the complex conjugate is still going to be the complex conjugate times the conjugate of the complex conjugate. Anytime you do this twice, when you take conjugation twice, you're just changing the sign twice. This ends up being z bar times z. This is the square root of a squared plus b squared. 
You'll find there are some exercises in the back of this section that show you help uh, that, that show you that the complex conjugate of z plus w, for example, is z conjugate plus w conjugate. Uh, the complex conjugate of a conjugate is just what it was originally. There are several identities that will be pretty clear. We have to load up a new tape. I'll be right back.